What is up you guys? Thank you for tuning into this video. Today I'm going to be installing an inexpensive big brake kit for the front of my 1995 Mitsubishi Montero. The reason this kit is inexpensive is because it uses stock Mitsubishi parts. So all of these parts came from a 2001 Mitsubishi Montero Sport with the 3.5 and the 16 inch factory wheels. Let me show you what I got. All right, so what you're gonna need from uh, a junkyard or something are these caliper brackets. Now it's the front caliper brackets, again for a Montero Sport with the 16 inch factory wheels. And uh, the reason for that is because it uses a bigger disc. Now this front disc is a 314 millimeter, whereas the factory front is only a 276 millimeter. So you get an inch and a half bigger brakes. And uh, here's the part number for the brakes. Bendix and I also bought some some new pads. These are Bendix pads as well I don't have a part number for you But I got them on rock auto. There's your part number They were pretty cheap. These ones are on sale, but they're all Ceramic pads. I think these I want to say this whole whole thing cost me Like a hundred bucks Now I did uh, I already took the wheel off obviously uh, my caliper was seized up here So my brake pads wore pretty thin and I've actually had this kit for, for quite a while. I just didn't feel like doing it yet, but uh, now's the time since I need to do front brake pads anyways. The reason I haven't done it is because this whole hub has to come off and the wheel bearing has to come out and all that garbage has to come off, which is super annoying. Um, but yeah, we're gonna do it. I'll show you the special tool you need for the wheel bearing. Um, another thing we have to do when we put those big brakes on is you can either get the um, dust shield from the Montero Sport, or you can cut this one. I'm just gonna end up cutting it because I don't have the dust shield. Let's get right into it. We're gonna pull this hub off. We're gonna pull that out. Or no, yeah, pull the hub off, and then we'll get into the wheel bearing, and that should come out too. So to start off, what you wanna do, pull the caliper off. I already have mine off. Pull the caliper bracket off as well. And then uh, if you have manual locking hubs, pull them off. If you have auto hubs, pull those off, and I'll meet you back right there. been a while since I've been in here these are like some Chinese they're like 40 bucks for these locking hubs and they're holding up great they look super good even with the LS in here and rev limiter and four and four low um, there's a pin or a um, C clip here that you get to spread apart and pull off um, this is quite loose which I think is okay because it's not my wheel bearing Yep, so we're gonna pull that clip off and go from there. Pull the hub off of here, it should slide right off then. Um, yep, let's do that. All right guys, now is when you want a shop towel or a bunch of paper towels or whatever. You are gonna get greasy doing this, okay? Goes on. I got all the grease out of here. That's normal. I still got my original, original grease in there. Okay, so on the wheel bearing, you guys probably can't see it from there, but there are two Phillips head screws on it. So you can undo both of those. That'd be pretty tight, so be careful. Don't strip them out. There's one out. Bottom one. Basically this just holds the retainer in. So this retainer should come out. Flat head screwdriver for that. There's the retainers out. The school bus is here. Out. 
out. All right, you can see this now. This is a real wheel bearing retainer, right? It's a, on a big old hub nut, right? So there's two of these holes here, one hole. There is the second hole. Now this is where you need the special tool, mainly to tighten it, because to loosen it, you can get it off. Like mine is, mine is already pretty loose. Let me show you the tool you need before you take any of this apart. This, this is an, all right, let's read it. Evercraft 776-1071. Now this is a Chevy hub tool, I believe. And you can see I just ground down, I think there are six on here. I ground down all of the nubs except for these two. And now what this does, is it slides in there and it allows you to tighten this because this gets tightened down to like 130 foot pounds and then backed off, all right? So you have to use this tool to do it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, let's do this all. Let me get the screwdriver on it. Take this all the way off. It's a big old fat retainer. It's like a big nut, essentially. Now, your wheel bearings will come right out. This hub should come off, so I'm gonna need two hands for this and hopefully not drop it all over the dirt. Just in case I do drop it. that's out there's a wheel bearing and there's an inner wheel bearing as well so this the grease actually looks pretty good probably gonna clean them off um, I'm just gonna get I'm gonna get my toolbox real dirty I'm gonna take this ABS ring off first right that's these two 12 millimeters which I don't have a 12 on me oh might have one there's a 12 let's put a 12 on the impact and we're gonna impact and you don't want to get too much dust in here okay impact that 12 off now you're gonna use the abs ring that came um on the montero so it came on your montero you're putting the brakes on right you don't want to use the one that came with your new brakes this should come off i believe okay well, i'm gonna work on that try and get that out without breaking anything um, I've never had to do front brakes on a Montero, so this is my first time, but I got a pretty good grasp on how to do it. Let's give me a minute and we'll pop this off of here. So this ABS tone ring can be kind of hard to get off sometimes, but I was able to pop it off with a pry bar and that gives you access to these bolts that hold the rotor to the hub. Right, here's the setup. 14 on the front, 14 on the back. That nut is probably stuck in there pretty good. Oh, that's one out. Don't forget you your bolt, a washer in the front, and a lock washer, and then a nut. So I'm going to do the rest of them and we can compare sizes. All right, I got all of the bolts out. It's kind of annoying to do. It'd probably be better if it was in a vise. See if this comes apart. Alright. Ah, oh, it's so close. There we go. That's all we we're trying to do. I may or may not have hit my lug threads, but it'll be alright. Nice. Let's compare these two. Let's look at the size difference. Oh my god. That's so much bigger. Way bigger. Now it's just assembly and should be good to go. So I'm gonna fast forward through all that. Just went to the auto parts place, got some disc brake wheel bearing grease, which is just high temp stuff. I did get fram, but it is what it is. That's all I had. So that should work. Uh, I'm not gonna fully repack the bearings, but I'm gonna clean 
the grease off of them and stuff them full of some more grease. So uh, I'm going to first, oh, I also bought some, shoot, bought some starting fluid at, to use as brake clean because it works the same and it was cheaper for some reason. Um, so I'm gonna spray off my discs, clean them up, bolt them together. Perfect, that's full of grease. Grease the shaft. You guys probably know how to do that already. I don't have to show anybody. Um, we'll slap this thing on there. I'm gonna push wherever I put my wheel bearing. I stuff that full of grease again. Um, it all looked pretty good on there. Uh, I did this a couple years ago and it has held up just fine. I'm gonna slap that on there and then I'll show you guys how to torque the wheel bearing nut. I'm just gonna use these I'm just gonna use this pair of tin snips. Uh, should be able to cut through this. That, that is impressive. Got that all trimmed up. You can see it was over here like this. Now the brakes should fit on it easy. Now I'm going to put this wheel bearing in. Uh, the small end, you can see it's tapered, so small to big. The small part goes in first. Push it in there. Just like that. I probably bent the the um, dust shield a little bit when I put or when I was cutting it, so that's just something to bend back. Now, we can start screwing this guy on, and it looks like it has a little recessed area here on this side, and this is the side that screws in. So this flat side is out. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my brake caliper and all that stuff on there. That way I could use the brake and uh, just have someone press the brakes so I can tighten the wheel bearing on there. All right, it was pretty hard to get 130 foot-pounds on that, but it did, just off camera because there's a lot of cussing involved. So I'm gonna undo this if I can. Ah, see, I hate this thing, what a terrible idea. Now we have to back it off. Can't get a good grip on it. Well, you back it off to zero foot pounds and then you tighten it back to 18 foot pounds. And then from there, from 18 foot pounds, you loosen it 30 degrees, 30 to 40 degrees. Got dark super fast, but tighten that thing, 130 foot pounds, back it off to zero, tighten it to 18 and then back it off 30 degrees and then this is how it spins all right. Again, it's, it has brake drag for now, but it feels, it doesn't feel like there's any play in it. it. We'll know more when we put the wheel and stuff on. But now we gotta get this ring on there. I guess, and it has like a, you might be able to see it. This little tooth at the top, the index is on the shaft at the top. And you try and find if any of those if any of those line up with your screw holes and you put your screws in. So I'm gonna spend some time trying to figure out if this works. And if it doesn't line up exactly, you can back the nut off or tighten it very tiny amount to get it to work. Don't don't go overboard with it. All right, now that I got that on, this side is pretty much done. You just have to put your hubs back on. And I have manual locking hubs, which is not factory, so. If you have a factory one, I don't quite remember how it was, but I think it's just a cap that goes on. And then um, you put like, it's not a, it's not a C-clip, or it's a C-clip, but it doesn't have holes in it, like a, like a C-clip, I don't know. You like pry that one off or something. But yeah, so I'm gonna put the hubs back on and I'm gonna have to do the other side in the morning. I kind of started late today, but um, 
I'm gonna do the other side tomorrow morning and I will take you guys for a drive and see how it feels. All right guys, it is the next day. I'm just gonna pick up where I left off. It was kind of dark last night. We were looking at this. Um, look how nice it looks. It's a lot bigger and I hope it, I hope it helps. So I'm going to put this wheel back on and I'm gonna do the other side. So that'll probably just be a time lapse because uh, it's a lot faster doing it that way. So let's see how fast I can do it. First time driving it with the brakes on it. I'm gonna bed them up here in about 40. I'm gonna slam on my brakes as hard as I can, and then uh, I'll tell you what it feels like. And I kind of want to do a 60, 60 to zero stop. Going 40 now. I'm gonna slam on my brakes. It actually locked up one of my brakes. Wow, that's, that worked way better than I thought it would. It actually locked up. I've never had that happen with the 35s on it. That's crazy. Let's do a 60 to zero up here. Okay, going 60. I'll wait till I get to flat 60. And slam on. That was in less than one telephone pole. So there's a telephone pole. Wow. We'll time that. Feels way better. Way better than it did. Well, you guys saw it there on the little uh, driving section. It actually locked up one of the brakes. I don't know if that was the rear or the front, but it definitely seemed like it was like it was stopping a bit harder um, than it used to with the smaller brakes, which is as to be expected, but I didn't think they'd lock up. One thing to mention is I don't have ABS on this. I mean, it doesn't work, so that's why it locked up. Uh, if you have ABS, it might be better, not sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is, a, this is a good upgrade for like 100 bucks, you can get a big brake kit for the front of it which is it helps a lot it seems like it's it's doing what it's supposed to so guys i think that's going to be it for this video uh, make sure you check the description i'll have a link to my instagram and hit that subscribe button while you're at it we're almost at 2000 which i think is pretty cool there's a lot of people that that like watching these videos which is uh fun that's the reason i put them out so another montero video in the books stay tuned for some more montero stuff i want to get some bumpers on this i'm probably going to do a lift on it some uh, new suspension and stuff and i'll see you guys in the next one one thing i forgot to mention is um with this big brake kit you need to run 16 inch wheels do not forget 16 inch wheels so that's it